Hi everyone and welcome to our video tutorial for this cat bandana that you can see Melba wearing here. So I hope you enjoy it. <laughs> Please like, share and subscribe and we hope to see you soon. Thanks. Bye. Okay, so to make this bandana you will need some yarn of course and I've got this one here which is a it's about a three to four weight probably closer to a four weight um, it's a cotton acrylic blend in this lovely terracotta color so you can use you know any yarn that you like um, a heavier weight yarn will make a larger bandana a finer weight yarn will make a smaller bandana and it's one way that you can vary the size of this bandana otherwise um, you can just continue with extra rows to what I'm doing Okay, so you can make this bandana pretty much any size that you want. And one way to change the sizing is to alter the weight of the yarn that you're using. If you want a similar size to what I'm getting, then, you know, go with perhaps a similar weight yarn. Melba is not a particularly large cat, so when you look at the photos, take that into consideration. She's only about four to four and a half kilos. And she's, excuse me, I knocked the table. And she's quite petite. So, you know, just bear that in mind as well. Her neck circumference is about 24 centimeters. So she's, you know, she's a, she's a, you know, just a small to medium sized cat. You'll need a crochet hook that corresponds to your yarn. Now I'm going slightly smaller than what my yarn recommends, but um, I want slightly tighter stitches. So I'm going slightly smaller. Once again, varying the size of the hook that you use will change the size of the bandana as well. So you can you can uh, change the size of your bandana by changing your hook size. You'll need a darning needle to weave in your ends, a pair of scissors, and a tape measure. Now, just optional, you don't need to have an exact measurement of your cat's neck circumference for this project. You can just change the length of the ties to accommodate different um, neck circumferences. I'll include in the description box below a guide to standard cat sizing, and you can work off that if that suits you. Otherwise, you know, it's always best to have a measurement and, and know your cat's proportions before you get started. So if you've got a tape measure handy, then take that measurement. Okay, so here's my two bandanas. This is the one I've made previously and the one that I'm filming today. So um, to make these bandanas, you'll need to know how to uh, slip knot onto your hook, how to create a chain, how to double crochet, how to single crochet, and I'll show you how to make these little bobbles. So we'll be making them using a double crochet five together in a pico okay so I'll show you how to do that um, it's it's you know it's pretty easy once you get the hang of it so um, yeah I'll show you that um, and from there we'll be chaining to create our ties slip stitching down the length of the ties and finishing off our work by weaving in ends so yeah I think that's pretty much it so let's get started Okay, so take your yarn and you'll make a slip knot onto your hook. Now just a reminder, I don't run through these basic techniques in any great detail, so if you need to brush up on anything before you get started, then please do. So I've made a slip knot there, and then I'm going to chain four. Two, three, and four. Now find that first chain or the furthest chain from the hook and you're going to slip stitch into that first chain, okay? So you've just made a little a little circle, okay? Now we're going to chain three and then we're going to insert one double crochet into the center of the ring, okay? So just make sure you get right in the center there. So there's my little center hole there. So I'm going to place a double crochet into the center of the ring. Now your chain counts as a stitch, so you've got two double crochets there. Okay. Then you're going to chain one, double crochet again back into that same space, chain one, double crochet back into that same space, chain one, 
And then to finish off, you're going to place two double crochets into that same center point in the ring. Okay, so you've got something that looks a little bit like this. Now you can gently pull on your tail and uh, tighten up that ring slightly. Okay, but you want to, you don't need it to be completely closed because we're going to be working into that bottom area as well anyway. So we're going to be working into the bottom here with our border. So you know you can leave you can leave that slightly open. Okay, so that's row one, and now we're going to move on to row two. So we'll chain three and turn. So once again, that counts as a stitch. We're going to double crochet into that first stitch. So you've got two double crochets in this first stitch here. Then you'll chain one. And in between these next double crochets, so not those first two, skip those first two in the previous row. In the next space between the double crochets, so the chain one space, you're going to place a double crochet. Okay, chain one. And then in the next chain space, double crochet, chain one. In the next chain space, double crochet, and then chain one. And in the top of the chain, you're going to place two double crochets. One, and two. Okay, so this is how it's starting to look. Okay, so you've got your two stitches at the beginning, you've got your stitches in the center, and then in the chain spaces, and then you've got your two stitches in the chain at the end. Okay, so this is how we're going to increase as well, okay? So we're basically just repeating row two, so chain three and turn double crochet into that first stitch, chain one, double crochet into those chain spaces, chain one, so all the chain spaces separated by a chain one until you get to the end of your row, chain one, in between in the chain space, chain one and then in the top of your chain from the previous row your two double crochets okay so you're just repeating row two now my advice is to you is to not work too tightly so your 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 bandana doesn't get misshapen okay so if you work too tightly it'll it'll kind of curl a little bit so just keep that nice and flat so you're just going to continue repeating row two until you get to the size of the bandana that you want. Now you want to go for an even number of rows. Now let me tell you how many I went for last time. Uh, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So I did twelve rows in this in this one. Okay. So if you want a similar size and you're using a similar size yarn then go for a similar number of rows. Otherwise, you can tailor this to whatever size you want it to be, as long as you finish up on an even number of rows. Okay? So continue on, just repeating that row two. One double crochet in the first stitch, chain one, and then double crochets in each of the chain spaces, separated by a chain one. And then in the top of the chain at the end of your row, you'll place your two double crochets, which, which gives you your increase. Okay, so you keep going. I'm going to keep going till I get to my 12 rows because I'm going to do the same size as what I did for this one. So I'll see you when I get to the end of my row 12. Okay, so I've got my 12 rows there. So now we're going to move on and make these little bobbles down the side okay so how we'll do that is chain one here so actually oops I think I've already chained one in anticipation let's go back there we go chain one and then in this space so you're going to be working 
just to just to show you before we start moving down the side, we're going to be working in between the double crochets along the edge here, okay? So some of them will be chains and double crochets, but we're going to be working in each of those spaces in between those those two stitches at the end there, okay? So we've chained one. Now you're going to place a single crochet in that first space. Okay, and then you're going to chain three, two and three. And we're going to make a double crochet five together with a pico. Okay, so we're going to be working, so you've got your chain three, I'll just pull my hook out for a second. So we're going to be working into these two loops at the base of the chain here. So this one, and I'll pick it up this one and this one. Okay, so you're going to be working into these two loops at the base of your chain. Okay, so you've chained your three and then you're going to double crochet five together into those two those two loops. So yarn over, insert your hook into those two loops, pull up a, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through and stop, yarn over, insert your hook, Yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through, two, and stop. So we're going to do that a total of five times. So that's two, and three. So it gets a little bit, little bit tricky in there. This is number four, four, and number five. So just don't make your stitches too tight, okay? So you can get yourself in there. Five. So it's a little bit, can be a little bit tricky. Oops, I've split my yarn. Sorry, I'm just going to go back. And this is my last one. And I'll run through this again for you as well. So I've pulled through two, and then I'm going to pull through all the loops on my hook. Okay, now I'll run through that again with you. Now chain one, and then we're going to just that just anchors the little bobble, and then we're going back into those two loops to make a slip stitch, and then we're going to single crochet back into that same space between those two stitches. Okay, so that's our first little bobble. So let's do one, let's do another one. Okay, so we're going to place a single crochet in the next space. So in between in in the next place that in between the chain and the double crochet. So single crochet in there. Move on to the next space and single crochet. And then we're going to do a bobble. So we're doing a bobble at the end of every second row, okay? So there's our first little bobble. We've skipped a row and then we're going to go into the next row. So chain three, two and three. And we're going to do that that uh, that little double crochet two, uh, five together, pico again, okay? So yarn over, insert your hook in those two loops at the base of your chain. Pull up a loop and yarn over, pull through the first two. Yarn over, insert into those two loops, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through the first two. So you've got three on your three on your hook now. Yarn over, insert your hook, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. So you'll have four. Two more. And this is where it gets a little bit tight. Yarn over, pull through two five loops, last one, and you've got six loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through all six. Chain one to secure your little bobble, and then slip stitch back into those two loops. And then single crochet 
back into that same space between the two double crochets or between the chain and the double crochet. So that's your next bobble. In the next space, single crochet. In the next space, single crochet. And then create your next bobble. So chaining three. So I'm going to let you head on and continue. So you're putting a bobble in every second row. Okay, and then in between you just place a single crochet in between the two stitches at the end. Okay, so I'm going to continue on and make my little bobbles until I get down to the end here. And then we're going to place a, a bobble down at the end. And I'll work around this little space with you. Okay, so keep working down until you get down and to the end here and I'll meet you down here. Now, actually, I should have mentioned it before we started on with these bobbles, but the, these bobbles are just optional, okay? If you want to keep your, your um, bandana just as this main bit, that's, you know, totally fine. And you'll meet us back when we get around to this side, okay? And we'll start chaining for the ties. I'll timestamp this if you've decided to skip the bobbles. Um, yeah, sorry, I didn't mention that before. But if you want to, oh, you know, you can totally skip these bobbles. So I'll meet you um, again. So once we get around down here, I'll meet you. Okay, so we're down at the base of the bandana now. So you'll place your single crochet as you would in between the rows, as you did before. Now, you'll just need to make a judgment here whether you need a second single crochet to get around your corner without without pulling the edges too much so what I I did that in the previous one I've placed two single crochets in these spaces in between the the previous bobble and the one that I place in here okay so I've placed two just to get myself around the corner now you might find that one is enough and then you know you'll just you'll just do as you did before otherwise you're going to place two single crochets in that previous space and then you'll just do the the other sorry you'll just do the end just the same as you did for all the others okay so I just wanted to mention that you might just need an extra single crochet in this side and in this side Okay, so just to get yourself around the corner without pulling the in the edge too tight. So if you need that extra one, place that one the one there, and then of course if you place one there, place one here as well. Okay, so just continue around, make your little bobble exactly the same way at the top here. Work yourself all the way down until you get to here, and I'll meet you here. Okay, I just also want to mention here that if you want to, you can start to work in your tail as you work along the other side, or you can just weave it in at the end. So I'm going to place my two single crochets on the other side there. And then I'm going to start with my bobbles along this other side, and I'm going to work in my tail as I go. Okay, so you continue on. And actually, just to mention also that, that if... Even if, if two is not enough here, it's getting too tight, you can add, you know, you can add an extra one, ex extra single crochet in, in this actual end piece. You can just adjust that area as you need to, okay, so it's not misshaping the bandana. Okay, so if you need an extra single crochet here or there, just to make that um, how you want it to be, then, then you know, totally um, take that into your own hands. So I'm going to continue on like I said and I'll make my bobbles all the way up this other side and I'll meet you shortly. Okay, so I've got all of my bobbles added there. Now I'm going to start to chain for my ties. So you'll just, from where you've placed your last single crochet there in that last space, you'll just start to chain to the length that you need for your ties. Okay, so I'm going to chain about 50 chains, but you know, you chain however many you need. So you'll, you'll, you know, you'll work out the next circumference that you're using, if whether you're going by the guide or you've got a measurement. Obviously, you've got this area that is included in the next circumference, and then you want to 
uh, chain to the length that you need so you can either tie a little knot tie a bow however you want to do that okay so you you'll just have to work that out for yourself how much um, length you need so just make sure you count your chains because you will you will need to replicate it on the other side okay so go ahead and chain to the length that you need and I'll do the same and I'll meet you there Okay, so I've chained the length that I want, which is 50. And now you're just going to slip stitch down the length of your chain. So I'm just going to chain one extra as a turning chain. And then from the second chain from the hook, I'm just going to slip stitch down my chain. Okay, so just one slip stitch in each chain. And I'll meet you when I get back to here. Okay, so I'm just placing my last slip stitch at the base of that first tie. And then you're going to single crochet back into that same last space. Okay, where you placed your last little bobble. And then you're going to single crochet along the top here. So what we're going to do is we're going to single crochet one in the stitch. So in the in above this double crochets chain um, one single crochet and then one in the chain space okay one in the stitch and oops don't need to yarn over it and then one in the chain space okay so you'll just keep doing that along the top here until you get of course to the other side and then you'll chain your sound as you did for your first tie to create your second tie okay so you go ahead and finish off along here so one single crochet in each of the double crochets and one in each of the chain spaces all the way along and then you'll chain for your second tie and I'll meet you once uh, I've chained my second tie and and also just continue slip stitch down your tie and I'll meet you to finish off okay Okay, so I've finished my second tie and I'm just going to finish off by placing my single crochet back once again in that, that first space between the two double crochets. So just in that same space where your, your first bobble. So you're just doing the same as what you did on this other side. And then you can yarn over and pull through, leaving a tail for weaving in. Just snip off snip off your end and now all that's left to do is to weave in if you've only got one tail end like me that's great you might have two if you didn't work in your tail end down here now what you'll also notice just before I, we start weaving in you'll notice that probably this side which is technically the back side looks better with the bobbles okay so it's probably going to go that way okay but you know it also looks fine this way it's just you might just have to if you're having it at the front so all of this work is facing the front you might just have to just fold your bobbles in a little bit just make sure their little center hole is is covered over okay anyway that was just an aside but let's weave in our weave in our tail end so take your darning needle and thread it so you know as usual i i, I assume that you know these basic techniques so we're just going to weave it in underneath the stitches so I just tend to go along that single crochet edge because they're nice and firm stitches and I'll just weave it down a few more and then I'll I'll double back just don't double back where you've just come obviously but then double back down until you feel like it's nice and secure. So you can go back one more time, but for me that twice is enough. And then I'm just going to snip off 
any of the excess and we're done so whichever way you prefer to have it whether I tend to have it on the front even if that work even if those single crochets I'm looking at them from the back that doesn't matter it's kind of hidden underneath the neck anyway and then I just tie it from there I like the the, the bobbles sort of at the f like facing what should be the back really but it, it turns out to be the front so there's your bobble bandana so congratulations I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial this is uh, you know just kind of fun whether you've added the bo bobbles on or you've just made the bandana just as the main you know that main main center area so send your photos along um, if you've got some time to catventurous.community at gmail.com or you can tag us on social media at catventurous.crochet so I'd love to see how yours has turned out you know there's there's lots of options with this you could make your bobbles a different color you could um, yeah like you know you you just make these patterns your own and add your own creative spin to them so thanks very much for being here and I hope to see you soon okay bye you ready mother Oh, sweet pea. Ready? Ready, sweet pea? One more? Yeah. Ready for treats? Yeah. Yes, treat time, huh? Treats? Okay, let's go. <laughs>